So the pocket transit is the, the geological compass that we use to take three-dimensional orientations of physical features, such as formations of rocks and, and so forth. But the, there are many other geological compasses out there. I mean, we just happen to use the front and be very precise with it, and, and in general it's hard to break them. Um, but a, as you can see, even a, your iPhone, your smartphone, will have an app that you can download, and that will be able to take strikes and dips and uh, get your bearings and so forth. So right now we're going to go over parts of the brim. Um, first off, there's the case. Now when you put your Brunton in the case, it's important to always put the mirror side, which is the thin side, along the belt loop of the case. That way it protects the mirror when you're going around jumping off rocks. If you happen to land on the mirror side, when it's out, you might shatter it. So step one, open it up and take it out of the case. Now start to zoom in here a little bit. And you'll see that there's this ambiguous black portion right here. And then there's this other portion right here. It's kind of hard to tell which is the hinge. So the first thing you do is you locate the black part. And then that's where you open. So you should put your thumb in there and pop that out. Now there's a few other pieces that we'll talk about. Um, here's the mirror. The mirror has many uses. You can use it to uh, shave if you need to as well as sighting things and signaling, which we'll go over later. Uh, within the mirror, there is a line going across it. Uh, that goes along the axis of the compass. So if you're going to sight with it, you know that that is perfectly centered. Uh, also within the mirror, there is a hole. We call that the sighting window, and then you also use that to sight. And conveniently, through the sighting window, that axial line continues. So when you're looking through that, you know where your exact center is. Uh, then there's these things protruding from the side of the compass. There's the folding sight right here, which is a small one. And then there's the sighting arm. The sighting arm has a little peep sight at the end right here. Now both of these sights have a little widow's peak on the center of it. And that helps just to find uh, the axial uh, line as well. Now, once you figure out where the sights are, you want to go inside the general window of the compass right here. And within the bulk of the compass, there are uh, numbers going all the way around it. There's two types of compasses, there's azimuthal and quadrant compasses, and we'll go over those on the, the next slide. But uh, keep in mind that for both compasses, Numbers on the outside represent a bearing relative to north. Now, there's two levels that you'll notice are inside the compass. One of them is cylindrical, and the other one is circular. If you are using the clinometer, which we'll go over shortly, you're going to use the cylindrical one. The S is the round one, and you use that for strikes and dips, which we'll go over shortly, and that tells you when the compass is horizontal. Let's see, other things to consider are where is north? Which part of the needle points to north? And uh, always just remember the white part is pointing to uh, magnetic south, which we consider our north pole magnetically. Another part right here is the lift pin. Now, if you were to close the compass, you'll notice that the lid pushes down the lift pin. And what that does is locks the compass so that when you shake it and walk around, the needle doesn't shake around like that. Later on, when you get better at striking dips, you'll be able to measure something above your head and then push the lift pin and freeze the needle in place, and that becomes convenient later on. Um, let's see, the last, most important part that we need to talk about is right here. There's this little screw like, located on the hinge side. And uh, what you can do with that is you shove your thumbnail or a penny or a key or something in there. And as you rotate that, it rotates the bezel within the compass space that has your bearing degrees on there. So when you're setting your magnetic declination, this is the screw that you'll use. 
Alright, so, by this time you've all been passed out a compass, and you're figuring out the parts of it, but you're wondering, do I have an azimuthal or a quadrant compass? Now, with a quadrant